Welcome, this is Dr. G, and in this video, we will be talking about the rational exponent rule, basically when your exponent is a fraction. The rule itself is pretty straightforward. You just have to know what goes where, and you'll be fine. But the applications, once you know the rules, is endless. There's so many things, there's so many doors that opens up in math once you're comfortable using the rational exponent rule, which means you might see some weird questions on the tests. So in this video, I will be spending probably one or two minutes going over the actual rule, and then we'll spend the rest of the video going over examples of questions that you might see on your tests. You got this. Let's have some fun. Let's go. First, a little terminology. What you see on the screen here is a root, also known as a radical. What goes inside a radical, we call the radicand. And what goes in that little corner on the left, we call the index. If you don't see a number or letter in the index, you can assume it's the number two, because two is the default index we use. So we can rewrite rational exponents, like you see on the left, x to the power of one third, we can rewrite that as a radical. Note that the base of the exponent, or the x, becomes the radicand. The denominator in the fractional exponent, the 3, becomes the index. And the numerator of the fractional exponent, 1, uh, becomes the exponent on the outside of the brackets. Now, there is another way we can place the 1, or the numerator, in your exponent. We can actually put it as an exponent in the radicand, for the most part, it really doesn't matter which way you do it. I will still stick with the first location. Just put a bracket around your radical and put the exponent on the outside. Can't go wrong. Here we have x to the power of 1 half. We can put the x in the radicand and the 2 or the denominator in the index slot. But remember, the default index is 2, which means we don't even have to write that. We can get away with the answer of the root of x. It's assumed it is the square root of x. Remember, you can only leave the index blank if it's a 2. If it's a 3 or 4, you have to write those numbers. Can we go backwards and turn radicals into rational exponents? Absolutely. Our x, which is the radicand, stays as the base of the exponent. The 4, which is in the index slot, becomes the denominator. And the 3 stays as the numerator. Let's start with this example here. Negative 64 to the power of a half. Well, the negative sign isn't in a bracket, which means it's not being affected by the power of a half. So let's write the negative sign as a negative 1 in the very front, multiply 2, our 64 to the power of a half. Well, 64 to the power of half can be rewritten as a radical. Notice there's nothing in my index because my denominator is a 2, and like I said before, you don't have to write 2 in the index. Okay, well, what is the square root of 64? It would be positive 8. So now we have negative 1 times 8, giving us a final answer of negative 8. Next example, it's pretty similar to the previous example with the difference of having brackets around our negative 64. That actually changes a lot because all of a sudden, the negative sign is now a part of our base, which means it gets dragged into our radicand as well. So what is the square root of negative 64? No solution. Because positive 8 times positive 8 gives us positive 64. Negative 8 times negative 8 gives us positive 64. So there is no such number that can multiply by itself and give us negative 64. So no solution. Moving right along, now we have negative 64 in brackets to the power of negative 2 thirds. Well, we got to deal with the negative exponent first. We don't like that in math. So what do we do? It's not happy in the numerator, so we're going to take it and move it down to the denominator. Notice the exponent becomes positive now, but the negative 64 stays negative. Okay, and there is nothing left on the numerator, so we're gonna put a one there to show that there's something there. And now we can deal with the rational exponent on the denominator. We know that the negative 64 is gonna end up in the radicand, and the three will be in the index, but the two can either go with your radicand, or it can go on the outside. And like I said before, usually you're gonna to wanna to keep the exponent on the outside so now what can we do? We can actually take the cube root of negative 64. Isn't that just negative 4 times negative 4 times negative 4? 
So our denominator in the brackets gets simplified because the cube root of negative 64 is just negative 4. So now we have 1 over negative 4 in brackets to the power of 2, which is going to be 1 16th as our final answer. Just a quick note here. You might know that you can't take the square root of negative radicand, but it gets often misinterpreted into you can take any roots of negative radicands. And that's not true. As you can see earlier, we were able to take the cube root of negative 64. So it's much better to think of it as you can't take an even root of a negative radicand, meaning your index cannot be even if your radicand is negative. But if your index is odd and your radicand is negative, that's fine. All right, next question, nine to the power of 1.5. Now, you might be thinking, I can just punch this into a calculator. I can do 9 to the power of 1.5, and they'll give me an answer. And you're right. But what if this is a no calculator question? Well, let's think about it. What can we do with the 1.5? Because decimal numbers are weird in the exponent. We can write it as a fraction. So that becomes 9 to the power of 3 halves. Well, since we have a fractional exponent, we can write it in the radical form. 9 goes into the radicand, 2 goes into the index, so we don't have to write that, and 3 becomes the exponent on the outside. Now we have the square root of 9, which is going to be 3, all to the power of 3, giving us a final answer of 27. Next up, we have the cube root of xy squared. Now, what is our radicand? It would be the combination of xy squared. What's my index? That would be 3, so that's going to end up being the denominator of my fractional exponent. And what about the numerator? I don't see an exponent outside, which means it's probably a 1. So I can rewrite this as xy squared all to the power of 1 third. Notice the brackets here. It's important because that shows that both the xy squared is my base or my radicand and not just the x or not just the y squared. Now we can do a little bit of power rule here and distribute the exponent on the outside of 1 third into my x to the power of 1, right? Always write the 1 there even though you don't see it. Easy to miss. And y to the power of 2. When you multiply the exponents, you're going to end up with x to the power of 1 third, y to the power of 2 thirds, and that's all we can do. If you're comfortable with radicals and radical rules, you can actually do this question another way. Because we have x, y squared as our radicand, and they're multiplying each other, you can actually split this up into two separate radicals. The cube root of just x multiply to the cube root of y squared. And now you can just convert each radical into a rational exponent. The cube root of x becomes x to the power of 1 third, and the cube root of y squared becomes y to the power of 2 thirds, and you get the final answer just like we did earlier. All right, let's take a look at this one. It looks very intimidating, but it's really not that bad, and teachers love giving it. So what do we do here? We're going to start with just the radicand, which is 2x squared. And then let's take a look again from the inside out here. What's the very first radical? That would be the cube root, wouldn't it? And there is no exponent on the outside, so it will be to the power of 1 third. Okay, next layer. What is the next radical? The index is 5. There is no exponent, so that would be to the power of 1 fifth. And then finally, the last radical on the outside, there is no index, which means it's a 2, so it will be to the power of 1 half. Now, we can use the power rule and multiply the exponents together. So that's going to give us 2x squared all to the power of 1 30th. And now again, we can power rule one more time and distribute the 1 30th into 2 to the power of 1, write the 1 there, and x to the power of 2, giving us the final answer of 2 to the power of 1 30th and x to the power of 1 15th. I got that because I reduced 2 30th down to 1 15th. Okay, the last two examples we're going to do in this video is different from the previous examples in that we're not simplifying or just converting radicals into rational exponents or back. We're actually trying to solve when there's radicals in the equation. Now, we're not going to actually solve because that's in the radicals chapter. This is exponents. But what I want to show is how useful it is to use rational exponents when you're solving radicals. Let's take a look at this example here. The square root of x is equal to x minus 2. How do I solve for x? Well, you notice the one on the right, the x minus 2, that one's fine. But the one on the left is stuck inside a root, a square root. If you want to get rid of a square root, you would do the opposite operation. And the opposite operation of square root is 
to square. And by doing that, you would essentially cancel out the square root and the square on the left, which isolates the x. So then you end up with x equals x minus 2 squared. And of course, then you would foil out the x minus 2 and then group it together, factor maybe, and then get your answers for x. But we're not going to do that for this video. Now, the square root of x is easy. But what if you see this? The fourth root of x cubed is equal to 8. How the heck do we solve that? What do you have to do to both sides to isolate the x? It's not that easy, is it? So let's go back to the previous question and let's backtrack. Let's start this question from a different approach. Let's actually convert this into a rational exponent. That means my root x actually becomes x to the power of a half. Okay, now let's say we still square both sides and you'll see why we do it now. If I were to take the square of both sides, I'm going to write this as 2 over 1 and not just 2 because it'll make more sense visually. If I raise both sides to the power of 2 over 1, what do you notice between the original rational exponent of 1 half and the 2 over 1 that I'm raising? They are reciprocals. Now, why do we want to raise both sides to the reciprocal of my rational exponent power? Well, what rule am I doing here to simplify this? I'm going to have to use the power rule and multiply my exponents, right? And what happens when you multiply reciprocals with each other? You always get 1. And what happens when you have 1 as an exponent? It doesn't mean anything. It's gone. So by doing that, I've actually isolated my x. And now it's x to the power of 1, which is basically just x. And on the other side, I still have to take x minus 2 to the power of 2. Now let's try this again. We can rewrite this as a rational exponent of x to the power of 3 fourth. And now how do I get rid of that power of 3 fourth? I'm going to take both sides to the power of the reciprocal of 3 fourth, which is 4 thirds. That way, on the left, when I do the power rule of 3 fourth times 4 thirds, that's going to give me a 1. So I have x to the power of 1, or just x, equals 8 to the power of 4 thirds. Now at this point, you might be thinking, I'm done. I'm going to crunch this into my calculator and I'm good to go. But again, what if there's no calculators? So let's do this by hand. What is another way to simplify 8 to the power of 4 thirds? That would be to write it as a radical. Remember, when you write it as a radical, your numerator of 4 in the exponent can either be right beside your radicand or 8 or it can be on the outside. But like we said, it's much better to keep it on the outside. So we're going to stick with that here. Now we have the cube root of 8 all to the power of 4. What's the cube root of 8? That's 2. Becomes 2 to the power of 4, giving us a final answer of 16. All right, and that is the video for rational exponents. As you can see, the rule itself wasn't so bad, but there are a lot of different questions they can ask you once they've taught you the rule. Hopefully you feel more comfortable using the rational exponent rule. If you like the video, give the video a like. And if you really like the video, I would appreciate a subscribe. It will help the channel grow a lot. If you have any questions, comments, or topic requests, you can always put it down in the comment section down below.